Don't forget to subscribe and press the bell icon to never miss a video from testbook.com. All right, so welcome back, everyone. Very, very welcome to all of you. So, my dear, uh, welcome back to the Testbook Gate channel. Okay, so now, with a, today, we are going to talk about the Grayshoff Law. Okay, that is the agenda of this session. Okay, but before that, I would like you to I I would like to request you to please go and like and subscribe. Please go and like and subscribe the channel because on this channel we are giving you so many good videos, right? So many technical videos. I hope you have already subscribed it, but if not subscribed it, do not forget to do it now. Okay, okay, because on this channel, on this textbook gate channel, we are having so many technical subjects running at the same time. All right, so theory of machine, I am doing storm is happening on the channel fm is happening hmt is happening thermodynamics is happening so beta please do not forget to subscribe the channel okay do not forget to subscribe the channel so beta my name is umar shankar tripathi and i'll be today continuing with the theory of machine theory of machine uh, content okay okay so in the previous session what we have done in the previous session beta what we have done in the previous session we have formulated this equation that is the equation of this is the equation given by push back and in the last session if you remember if you have seen it if you have not seen it please go and watch it okay please go all the previous video this is the sixth video in continuation of theory of machine and we'll be completing every week we are meeting at on tuesday thursday and saturday right tuesday th thursday and saturday so every week my dear on these days we are having theory of machine running running at 3 30 pm sharp and these sessions are live so you can ask your friends also to come and watch the live videos so that whatever doubts you have maybe we can cover them or we can deal with it in the live session itself right but in the live session itself so in the last session beta, we have seen this equation in the last session beta, we have seen this equation okay which equation my dear the equation for degree of freedom of a mechanism the equation of degree of freedom of a mechanism so the degree of freedom of a mechanism as we have seen in the last session is given by this where l was the number of links in a mechanism l was the number of links in a mechanism j is number of joints in a mechanism j is number of joints in a mechanism and h is number of higher pairs h is the number of higher pairs getting my point bro? h is the number of higher pairs. now i want to now i want to give you something more in this equation i want to change it a bit I want to have it changed a bit. So if I change this relation, so I'll be adding one more thing that is your FR. That is your FR. So FR is what? FR is number of redundancies. Number of redundancies. Now what do you mean by this FR? Now what do you mean by this FR, that is the number of redundancies. So the FR, the meaning of this FR, so for, uh, I'll be telling you this with an example. Okay, an example say, my dear, I will be giving it to you with an example. So, now, I'll be defining it. Okay, just look for it. Just have a look at it. So we have something like this, we have something like this arrangement, we have something of this sort, we have something like this, we have arrangements of sort of this, okay, 
some sort of this. Now please understand what do you mean by redundancies? There are some questions that are getting asked from this topic also. Okay, now the redundance means the number of extra motions. Redundance means the number of extra motion in a mechanism. Now what do you mean by extra motion? So I keep telling you this in the theory of machine session that uh, we are very much we are very much concerned with the we are very much concerned with the we are very much concerned with the input and output the input and output the input and output of the mechanism is something we are most concerned with okay now if you try to understand the concept if you try to understand the concept so i'll i'll, I'll tell you something so in the last session bit we have seen this one no in the last session we have seen this mechanism in the last session we have seen this mechanism now we know that uh, if input is to be given input should be given at this and output can be taken at here or we can reverse this we can have the out input uh, in the place of this output and output in the place of this input we can reverse the order usme koi problem nahi hai chahe input output jo output yahan le lijiye input yahan le lijiye there is no problem in that beta isme koi problem nahi hai isme koi problem nahi hai now now if i say from conversion of input to output this coupler is playing a very important role this coupler is playing a very important role so when input is uh, there on this link it is getting transmitted through the coupler to the output so the motion of the coupler motion of the coupler is very much important or we can say it's very much necessary for conversion of input to output for the conversion of input to output do we agree to it or not so in this beta in this what we can say fr is zero there is no extra motion whatsoever there is no extra motion here koi bhi extra motion nahi hai hello adarsh welcome to textbook gate channel beta okay so uh, now now there is no fr there is no redundancy in this no extra motion every motion is playing some role in the mechanism the motion of the input is getting converted by the coupler to the motion of the output so there is no redundancy in this right right but if you see in this mechanism that i made above it you see this yellow link it can have a sliding motion in the slot as well now this sliding motion has nothing to do now this sliding motion has nothing to do to convert convert input motion to output motion okay this has nothing to do to convert the input motion to the output motion so we can say there is one redundant motion in this there is one redundant motion in this so do you agree that this uh, is sliding of this uh, yellow link in the in the slot here has nothing to do to convert input to output right so what we can say the redundancy is zero what we can say here the redundancy is zero now if i find the degree of freedom of this mechanism if i find so degree of freedom is not zero actually there is degree of uh, sorry redundancy is one because we have one extra motion we have one extra motion of this yellow link we have one extra motion of this yellow link so what we can say the redundancy is one okay it is not equal to zero sorry i have written zero i was saying that there is a redundancy but written it zero okay so i am taking that back so redundancy is not equal to zero so that means your fr is equal to 1 in this mechanism now if i put everything in the degree of freedom formula so how many number of links are there four links are there how many joints are there four joints are there higher pair is zero and there is one redundant in that okay so i'll be applying this equation in the last session we have we have dealt with this orange color equation now in this session beta with the starting in this session i have introduced one more term that is the fr which refers to the number of redundant motions or number of redundancies we can say okay so here in this mechanism as you can see there is one motion of this sliding which is extra in this which has nothing to do 
in conversion from the input motion to output motion. So we can say we have FR is equal to 1 there. So if we calculate the degree of freedom of it, it is going to be 0. So this degree of freedom now becomes 0, now becomes 0. Hence, this whole thing is acting upon as a structure. In the last session, Vida, in the last session, what we got, in the last session, what we have seen, in the last session, we have seen that if degree of freedom of a mechanism is coming out to be 0, if degree of freedom of a mechanism is coming out to be 0, so we can say that mechanism is nothing but a is structure is nothing but a structure so is this fr clear to you is this fr clear to you so if it is not clear yet i am very much sure that it will be cleared with this example okay so we know in the last session we have developed the degree of freedom of a cam and follower mechanism but that cam and follower mechanism there the follower was knee fetch follower now in this let's see this now let's see this now so there is one more this is one more kind of arrangement of this cam and follower this is one more kind of a arrangement of this cam and follower where we are using roller follower we are using this roller follower now can you find the degree of freedom for me in this can you find the degree of freedom for me in this can you please find the degree of freedom for me in this can you go ahead and find the degree of freedom for me in this can you please do it live students whoever is live others or anyone else so the live students my dear please solve this equation please try to see if we can do it or not please go for it my dear Please go for it. Let's see if you can do it or not. If you can do it or not, please go ahead. 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 Can we do it, my dear? Can we do it, please? Can we do it, please? Please go ahead. Can we do it? Please go ahead with it. Let us see if we can do it or not. Let us see if we can do it or not. Let's try it the same way we have understood in the last session. Mira, you have to do the same in this also. You have to do the same in this also. Please go for it. Please go for it. I know we can do it, my dear. I know we can do it. Please go for it. Please go for it. Please count the number of links. Please count the number of joints. Please see how many higher pairs are there. And we will be fine. And we will be fine. Please go for it. Please go for it. Please go for it. I am very much sure that we can do it. I am very sure that we can do it, my dear. I am very, very sure that we can do it. Please go for it. So, how to do it, Vida? How to do it? So, first of all, we need to count the number of links. So, always be cautious while you count the number of links because if that becomes wrong, definitely your question is going to get wrong. So now this is the link number one, the fixed one. This is the link number one, the fixed one. Always name the link number one as the fixed one. Always name the link number one. Always name the link number one as a fixed one. Getting my point, Bida? Okay, the rest of them you can name as any way you want. The rest of the links you can name as any way you want. Getting my point? The rest of the links you can name by any way you want. Right? Right, Bida? Right? This is what we have learned before. Okay, in the previous session, I hope you guys are watching the previous sessions also. 
So now, what is this uh, cat? So this is link number two because it is rotating, right? This follower is link number three. It is reciprocating. What we learned before that any link which is having relative motion with respect to the other parts of the machine is a link. Any any part of the machine which has relative motion with respect to the other parts of the machine, other parts of the machine. So we got three links here. Now, if you see this roller, this roller can also rotate about its individual axis. So this should also be named as a link node. This should be also named as a link right. This should be a link in the way we name it. If we name this link in the way we name it, how many links are there, my dear? How many links are there, my dear? How many links are there? So definitely, sir, definitely, sir, definitely, sir, there are Definitely, sir, there are definitely, sir, there are four number of links. So, how many links are there, my dear? Four links are there. Okay, now let's count the joint. So, do not make mistake in counting the joint. So, we have this uh, joint where one and two are getting connected. So, this is one by V. This is one by V. We have a joint here between one and three. So, we got one by V here. Now, we can see a joint between. 3 and 4, so we have 1 by V here, and between 4 and 2, there is a line contact, so we can say 1 higher pair we got at, between 4 and 2, there is 1 higher pair, so how many number of binary joints are there, how many number of binary joints are there, so we got 3 binary joints, yes or no, we got 3 binary joints, we got 3 joint binary joints, we got 1 higher pair, we got one higher pair as well. Now, do we have any redundance in this? Do we have any redundance in it? Can you see the extra motion here? Now, I think the things must be very, very clear to you from this example. Now, you see the input is, now you see the input is your, now what we understand, the input is our, the input is our, rotation and this follower motion that we are getting is our output. Now, can you see that this roller being rotating about its hinge or, or, or about this pin joint has nothing to do in converting this, has nothing to do in converting this rotation input to reciprocation output. So, what is your FR here? What is your FR here? So, FR is one bit of what is your FR here? FR is 1 meter, right or wrong meter? So if L is number of links are 4, if number of links we got are 4, now there is one FR. Because when you see this roller being rotated, when you see this roller being rotated about this uh, uh, pin joint, about this pin joint, so this rotation has nothing to do in converting the input motion to output motion. So hence we got here, our redundant motion, okay, our redundance we have in this mechanism. Now, if we put it into the formula, if we put everything in the formula, so if we put everything into the formula, we'll be getting 3, 4 minus 1, minus 2 into 3, minus H, minus 1, right, beta? Minus H, minus 1, so what, what we'll be getting from here? So 3 into 3, that is 9, minus 6, minus 1, minus 1, so again, your degree of freedom is coming out to be 1 and it, it would have been. So definitely it is a kinematic change. Now, I want to tell you something very interesting. I want to tell you something very interesting. So sir, I also admit to you, some of you might be thinking, sir, that sir, in examination in the gate hall or in the examination center, it is really unlikely that we guess that there is a redundancy in this we can guess there is a redundancy in it. So definitely, sir, it is uh, somewhat difficult to identify. Definitely, it is somewhat difficult to identify. I agree to this. I agree to this that this is somewhat uh, difficult to identify. This is somewhat difficult to identify. Now, please understand this. In the last session, if you have seen the last session, I told you one concept that degree of freedom refers to the number of input required for unique output, right, right. Now, please tell me, my dear, please tell me, my dear, so this is a cam and follower unknown mechanism. This is a cam and follower 
a known mechanism now since it is a known mechanism now since it is a known mechanism definitely since it is a known mechanism definitely since it is a known mechanism definitely the degree of freedom is one because we know in a cam and follower there is always there is always unique output for the unique input so now what i am trying to say so if you see this question in the examination my dear if you see this question in the examination my dear you need not to solve it because you know you understand that this is a mechanism you understand this is a mechanism which has constrained motion for one input it has one output for one input it has one output so definitely we need not to solve it in the examination without doing any calculation if you are able to identify if you are able to identify that this is a cam and follower mechanism from the concept of degree of freedom from the interpretation of degree of freedom we can very well judge we can very well judge that this is a this is something which is having one degree of freedom this is something which is having one degree of freedom understood or not beta batai please answer me is this understood to you guys or not please answer me that beta please answer me that beta please answer me that is it understood or not please answer me that right right so now if i ask you this question sir so the degree of freedom of a mechanism shown in the figure the degree of freedom of this mechanism shown in the figure the degree of freedom of this mechanism shown in the figure so sir it is in a way a cam and follower mechanism only okay cam and follower mechanism only now you see in this so please please try to solve it so as i said this is a cam and follower mechanism then definitely degree of freedom will come out to be one degree of freedom will come out to be one but can you please go for it so that in, in examination if you are not able to identify even in the examination if you are not able to identify that uh, is this a uh, cam and follower even then you can have do it you can do it now can we please go for it can we please go for it before even solving the question because i am able to identify this is a cam and follower motion because it is going to rotate like this and this will be oscillating so this is oscillating type of follower a roller follower which oscillates so definitely we are always getting for unique input to unique output okay but still what we can do we can go for finding the degree of freedom of it okay so how to do it in the examination if you are able to identify it as a cam and follower mechanism no need of solving it any further you can answer it one because anyhow you need to answer the question correctly you will be getting the mark okay nobody is going to ask you how you do it okay okay so the link which is fixed is called upon as one this is two this is three and this uh, ruler as we can see it is four so how many links are there beta four links are there now how many joints are there so one by three is at this point okay so we can write it in green so there is one binary here 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 so we got three binary joints that is j is equal to 3 and we can see a higher pair we can see a higher pair we can see a higher pair between we can see a higher pair between this ruler follower and the cap so the higher pair is one now can we see any redundancy here yes sir, we definitely can see because this roller can rotate about its individual axis and it has nothing to do to convert the it has nothing to do to convert the rotation into reciprocation so fr is one now if you put everything into the formula you will be getting degree of freedom is equal to 1 you will be getting degree of freedom is equal to 1 now please understand this beta if you see the last session if you have seen the last session if you have seen the last session my dear we have used this formula in today's session in addition to it we have you we are using the formula of redundancy only okay 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 so where to see the redundancy i hope it is clear to you now okay but very famously this formula is also utilized like this 
understood my dear understood or not beta understood or not so i hope it is understood to you guys i hope it is understood to you guys now now this is what we call these both equation what we call we call them as kuch back equation we call it as kuch back equation getting my point beta we call them upon as kuch back equation right okay i told you this in the last session okay so this is what we call as kuch back equation okay okay now there is something known as grubler criteria or grubler equation there is something also known upon as grubler equation or the grubler criteria okay now what does grubler say now please understand this now please understand this very important concept very beautiful concept now please understand this what this grubler equation says so grubler in majority have given you guys this statement or given us this statement that for a kinematic chain so i told you in the very first session that kinematic chain is what we uh, desire the most because if we are getting for one input we are getting the one output that is the best proposition for unique input if we are getting the unique output there cannot be anything better than that now for a kinematic chain now for a kinematic chain please understand this now for a kinematic chain now for a kinematic chain for a kinematic chain without higher pair for a kinematic chain without higher pair for a kinematic chain without higher pair the number of links to be used should be even getting my point with that the number of links to be used should be even so for a kinematic chain without any higher pair the number of links to be used should be even so this is basically the statement of or we can say the uh, ultimate output or the most used output of grubler criteria right so for a kinematic chain without any higher pair the number of links to be used should be even now please understand this so f is equal to 3l minus 1 minus 2j minus h okay now what this is the equation given by the pushback sometimes in question it is also written as grubler equation but that is not true okay sometimes they ask you to identify the grubler equation and the pushback equation so it is a pushback equation now what is saying what grubler is saying so for a kinematic chain now kinematic chain is something which is having one degree of freedom without any higher pair without any higher pair so without any higher pair means that h is zero now from this equation can i rewrite this equation like this if i if i uh, open the bracket and if i rearrange this equation can i write can i be writing this equation like this so this is the equation grubler named after it named after him and this is something known as the grubler criteria this is something known as the grubler criteria now if we apply some basic understanding of mathematics this 4 is a even number i hope you understand this this 4 is a even number this 2 into j so 2 multiplied to any number no matter odd or no matter even 2 multiplied with any number will become a even number now 3 now to satisfy this relation to satisfy the left hand side to the right hand side now to satisfy this left hand side to the right hand side please understand this please understand this so 3 multiplied to even number now 3 multiplied to even number now 3 multiplied to the even number only then this equation can be satisfied please understand this so if if this no see this is very basic understanding of mathematics so in this relation we have uh, minus 2j minus 4 both are even numbers now this equation can only be satisfied when this equation can only be satisfied when 
L is also even because if L is not even, if L would not be even, so if you, what other option it can have? The other option could be that it is odd. Now, if 3 multiplied to any odd number, will it be, now 3 multiplied to any odd number, now 3 multiplied to any odd number, can it ever be a even number? No, obviously. Now, if it cannot be a even number, now if it cannot be an even number, then definitely this relation cannot be satisfied. Now, if this relation is to be satisfied, the number of links to be used should be even. Now, we agree to it or not? We agree to it or not? Please understand this. Please understand this. Now, I want to ask you something. How many links are required? How many links are required to make a chain, not a kinematic chain, any chain. Okay, kinematic chain is also a chain. So if you remember, I defined you the kinematic chain previously. So I told you there that for a chain, for a chain, the first link should be connected to the last link. For a chain, the first link should be connected to the last link. And for that to be a kinematic chain, the motion between the links or elements of the mechanism or the chain should be constrained. Agree or not? Now, can you please reply how many, how many, how many links are required to make a chain? Kitna link ek chain mana ke liye lagega? Can you reply me that, Vida? Can you reply me that, Vida? Can you reply me that, Vida? Can you reply me that? Can you reply me that, Bida? Can you reply me that? How many links will be required to make a chain, not a kinematic chain, just a chain? How many, how many links are required to make a chain? How many links, how many minimum number of links be required to make a chain? Can you please answer me that, my dear? Anyone? Adash, right. Very good, my dear. So, the how many links are required to make a chain? So, definitely three links are required to make a chain. So, why not two? Why not two? So, why not two? Because if two links, if two links, if two links uh, would have been used, they will be connected to each other because to form a chain, the first link should be connected to the last link. Right, Bida? Right. Now, if there are only two links, they will be connected to each other only. And when they will be connected to each other, they won't be counted as two different links. They would become one link only. Agreed or not? Agreed or not? Now, what is the minimum number of links required to make a chain? Definitely, the minimum number of links required to make a chain is three. Okay, to make a chain is three, right? But it is not an even number. It is not a even number. So it cannot be, it cannot be, definitely it cannot be a kinematic chain. Now please mind my words, it cannot be a kinematic chain without higher pair without higher pair right grubler criteria says we cannot use higher pair as well so now if somebody to some people if we ask that how many number of links are required to make a kinematic chain they say sir four i'll be coming to that that is not true a kinematic chain can be formed with three links only provided you use a higher pair right provided you use a higher pair and even if you uh, have seen the last session, so we have seen this in the last session, right? We have seen this one also in the last session, right? A knee fetch follower connected with a cam. A knee fetch follower connected with a cam, right? But a knee fetch follower connected with a cam. So we have this cam rotating. We have this follower reciprocating, right? So how many links were there? Three links were there. Okay, three links were there. 
three links were there, binary joint were two between this one and two and between three and one and higher pair is one. So if you see between two and three, there is a higher pair. So what is the degree of freedom? What is the degree of freedom? What is the degree of freedom? So the degree of freedom is coming out to be one. So whenever degree of freedom is coming out to be one, it is a kinematic chain. So what we are understanding here, for kinematic chain, for kinematic chain, the number of links can be odd only when there is higher pair getting used. Very important, right? Very important. Now, if I say how many links are required to make a chain free, it cannot be a kinematic chain without higher pair. Now, according to Grubler, so what is the first even number after three? So, very important statement is coming. Now, number of links, what we must say, we must say minimum number of links. So, this is a very, very famous equation in the history of theory of machine. So, minimum number of links minimum number of links required to form a kinematic chain to form a kinematic chain is 4 and mind it without higher pair we are talking without higher pair without higher pair we are talking so without higher pair if you want to make a kinematic chain the minimum number of links you need to use is four now is it understood or not and this is nothing but the, uh, the definition of simple mechanism and now in today's session will be giving you the heading of the very first chapter of this subject that is simple mechanism so simple mechanism is the one having four links and four binary joints or lower pairs getting my point beta getting my point and no higher pair so is degree of freedom so we know we know if there are four links and four binary joint the degree of freedom is coming out to be one now grubler has first coined this term as simple mechanism he is the one who has given this word simple mechanism to the world and he defined the simple mechanism as something which is having four links, four binary joint and no higher pair. No higher pair. So simple mechanism, in simple mechanism, we are using the minimum number of links. In simple mechanism, we are using the minimum number of links. In simple mechanism, my dear, we are using the minimum number of links to form a kinematic chain without any higher pair now is it fine or not is it fine or not now i want to ask you some questions now if i ask you simple mechanism and so see students have lot of confusion in this so simple mechanism and kinematic chain are same thing Simple mechanism and kinematic chain are same thing or not? Can you please answer me that, Peter? Can you please answer me? Is there is no difference between simple mechanism and kinematic chain? Which difference is here? Or there is no difference? They are same. Just, just the uh, difference of name. Now, can you answer me that, my dear? Can you answer me that, please? Can you answer me that, Peter? Can you answer me that, please? Can you answer me that, my dear? Can you answer me that, my dear? Please go for it. Please go for it. Good afternoon, I'm sure.
So are they the same thing or not? Are they the same thing or not? So definitely they are not the same thing. Definitely they are not same thing. Okay. Why they are not the same thing, my dear? Why they are not the same thing, my dear? Why they are not the same thing? So they are not the same thing because we can say so simple mechanism. So please understand what is the difference? So simple mechanism is something which is having no higher pair, which is having no higher pair. So what we can say here, so simple mechanism, what we can say every simple mechanism. So simple mechanism is what? Simple mechanism is something which is having four number of links, which is having four number of links. So every simple mechanism, now please understand. Every simple mechanism is a kinematic chain. Every simple mechanism is a kinematic chain, right? But all kinematic chains, all kinematic chains, are not simple mechanisms because simple mechanism is a kinematic chain because all the simple mechanisms all the simple mechanism all the simple mechanism no beta are you sure that is true as well but the major difference what i am trying to put to you is beta in a simple mechanism in simple mechanism, we have no higher pair and only four links can be used. Only four links can be used. Okay. This is simple mechanism. It has only four links. Any other number of links, you can call it a simple mechanism. If the number of links is six, that could be a kinematic chain, but it cannot be a simple mechanism. So a simple mechanism is something which must satisfy these three conditions. It must have four links, it must have four binary joints, it must have no higher pair. Understood my dear? It must have no higher pair. Right? Right? But kinematic chain is something which can have any number of links, any number of joints, any number of higher pair. But the degree of freedom should remain one. That degree of freedom should remain one. I hope now the difference of simple mechanism and kinematic chain is clear to every one of you. Now, Vida, please understand this. Now, when we talk about the simple mechanisms, so how many types of simple mechanism are there? So what are the types of it? Can you please answer me? What are the types of simple mechanisms? So we just have learned. So this is something which is having four number of links and four number of binary joint or lower pair, whatever you want to say, you can say. Whatever you want to say, you can say. So how many types are there of simple mechanism? How many types are there of simple mechanism? Can you please answer me, Peter? Can you please answer me that? Anyone? Anyone? Anyone, can you please answer me that, my dear? Anyone, can you please answer me that, my dear? Can you please answer me that, my dear? Bataye, kya aap answer kar sakte? Bataye, kya aap answer kar sakte? Adash. So what are the types of simple mechanisms? So there are three types of simple mechanism. One is four bar chain mechanism. One is four bar chain mechanism. The other one is single slider. Crank mechanism. The third one is double slider. 
क्रैंक मैकेनिज्म सो ऑल आर द इनवर्जन ऑफ ऑल आर द इनवर्जन ऑफ सिंपल मैकेनिज्म और वी कैन से ऑल आर द टाइप्स ऑफ सिंपल मैकेनिज्म गेटिंग माई पॉइंट बेटा so what is the difference amongst them what is the different amongst them so all have four number of links four number of loa pairs but in four by chain mechanism all are turning pairs so we in the previous session have understood what is turning pairs so we have here four turning pairs now in single slide crank mechanism we have three turning pairs and one is sliding pair Three turning pair and one sliding pair. Double slider crank mechanism is something which has two turning pair and two sliding pair. So this is how we can differentiate between them. All are simple mechanism. Please try to understand this concept. All are simple mechanism. All are simple mechanism. Okay. All are simple mechanism. So all have four number of links and four number of lower pairs. Now to differentiate between them, what we can do, we can say that in four bar chain mechanism there is four turning pairs. In single slider crank mechanism, the difference is that we have three turning pair and one sliding pair. And in double slider crank mechanism, we have two turning pair and two sliding pair. Now before moving ahead, I want to ask you a question. So if I say, so. so we have done this question so i'll i'll be quoting you another question okay ek dusra question beta so now if i show you this question now you want i want to uh, get some answer of it so it is a simple mechanism is it a kinematic chain is it a kinematic chain is it a unconstrained chain is it a unconstrained chain or is it a structure now can you please answer this to me is it a structure can you please answer this to me can you please go ahead is it a simple mechanism a kinematic chain an unconstrained chain All right, structure. Can you please answer me this? Can you please answer me this, beta? Can you please answer me this? Answer me this. Please go for it. Please go for it. Let's see if we can do it or not. Let us see if we can do it or not. can anyone please answer me this can anyone please answer me this can anyone please answer me this so yes sir what we can do we can find the degree of freedom of it we can find the degree of freedom of it we can find the degree of freedom of it so what what could be the degree of freedom what could be the degree of freedom here so what could be the degree of freedom so this link is one this link is uh, 4 2 3 so they have mentioned here the number of links by themselves so we have number of links is equal to 4 we have the number of binary joint here so this is one binary joint 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 and this is a higher pair this is a higher pair so how many joints we got with a three joints we got higher pair we have one and we have one frs well we have one frs well right or wrong beta 
because this ruler can rotate about its individual axis. So we have degree of freedom one. Now since it is having degree of freedom one, this mechanism is having simple, uh, single degree of freedom. This mechanism is having a single degree of freedom. So it is a kinematic chain, but not a simple mechanism. Is that understood or not, Beta? Is it clear to you guys or not? Please answer me. Please answer me. So it is not a simple mechanism because it has higher pair as well. No, since it has higher pair, since it has the redundance, so it cannot be a simple mechanism. Getting my point, Beta? It cannot be a simple mechanism but it can be a kinematic chain. So we can call this mechanism as a kinematic chain. This is a mechanism which is having, which is, which is a kinematic chain. Means we are getting unique input out of the unique, uh, sorry, we are getting unique output from unique input. So I hope from this, the difference in simple mechanism and kinematic chain is clear to all of you. Now, we will be analyzing this. So we have a four bar chain mechanism. Now please understand this. So what is they are asking you? So in four bar chain mechanism, we have four links and we have four joints and all four joints are turning pairs only. All four joints are turning pair only. So let us have a four bar chain mechanism so we can have a four bar chain mechanism drawn to us okay four bar chain mechanism drawn to us now we know now we know one thing that we need to we know one thing we need to we need to fix any one link we need to fix any one link here we need to fix any one link here beta. We need to fix any one link here, beta. right? Right now, which link to be fixed? Which link to be fixed? Okay, which link to be fixed? So let us say, let us say, let us name them something. So if we name them, let's say this is X, this is so we can we can name it. Just we have four links here, and in between these four links, we have all the turning pairs. We have all the turning pairs. Now, can you tell me? Can you tell me this thing, Bita? Can you tell me which link is needed to be fixed here? So, the, definitely as we are engineer, we are engineer, bhai. So, when we are engineer, we have to take decision. What is our work? What is our work? Engineer is our work. Engineer is our work. He will decide. Okay, what is our work? Now, we need to fix any one link. Now, the question is, which link fix it? Now the question is, which link is to be fixed here? Which link is to be fixed here? The question is, which link is needed to be fixed here? Now, how we are going to decide? So how we are going to decide which is the link that required to be fixed here? So the answer to this how will be given by pressure of law. This is the heading of this today's video and we are coming to it now because before coming to Grisha of Law, this is very much necessary that you understand what is simple mechanism, what is kinematic chain, everything well. So definitely, huh, definitely beta, based upon the, as Anshu you are saying, based upon the requirement of input and output motion to decide the fixed link, right? So which is to be fixed, which is to be fixed, which is uh, to be placed in what position? This is told to us by Grisha of Law. Because definitely, we will not do that, let's go, you can do it in 4, you can do it in 4, you can do it in 4. No, if you can see this link is more beautiful, so let's go, let's fix it, let's keep it in the So what questions we got? What questions we got? What questions we got? So which links is to be fixed? Which link is to be fixed? So Grishoff law will be addressing all these questions. Which link is to be fixed? Which link is to be placed at 
the position opposite to the fixed link right which link is to be placed in input and output position which link is to be placed in input and output position understanding my point beta understanding my point which link is to be placed in input and output position now all this information or all these answers are will be given by all these things will be given by all these things will be given by the gratia of law so gratia of law is something which is addressing all these questions gratia of law is something which is addressing all these questions is it okay or not beta is it okay or not now which link is to be fixed will be given by the gratia of law will be given by the gratia of law understood my friend understood my friend now what is this gratia of law what is this gratia of law so gratia of law says for at least or we can write for continuous motion for continuous motion okay or we can write it like this for at the least one crank for at least one crank in a four bar chain mechanism for continuous motion for at least one crank so what do we mean by the crank what do we mean by the crank my dear so crank is something which makes complete rotation in your mechanism so crank refers to the link which rotate completely which rotate completely okay which rotate completely so for continuous motion for at least for continuous motion or we can say for at least one crank for continuous motion or we can say for at least one crank for at least one crank the sum of the short shortest the sum of the shortest and the longest link the sum of the shortest and the longest link must be less than or equal to must be less than or equal to the sum of the rest two links the sum of the rest two links so for continuous motion what we can say for continuous motion means if we want at least one rotation or if we want at least one crank at least one crank okay at least one crank the sum of the shortest and the longest link must be less than or equal to the sum of the rest two links so this is what we call upon as the famous brechoff law and by using by using this grechoff law by using this grechoff law we will be answering all these questions that are written here okay so grechoff law tells us how many questions so all these questions will be answered by using grechoff law right right so very uh, useful law very interesting law my dear very interesting law my dear okay very interesting law okay okay so we'll be understanding it now before that i want to tell you something or before that i want to tell you something so my dear see when we are meeting here at youtube okay so if you come to the proper channel if you come to the textbook.com or if you download the app and then uh, you join the main course of gate 2022 the difference in here you will find huge difference in here and you uh, are in there okay when we do it in the platform okay when we do it in a platform 
although these sessions are very very useful to all of you but you understand that 100% completion of the subject okay we'll try to cover as many as topic we can but definitely if you come to the channel there will be more benefits to you okay so before moving ahead i want to show you something okay so this is uh, gate 2022 Live coaching is going on. The batch has already started. So if you have not joined yet, अगर आपने अभी तक join नहीं किया है, तो please do give it a chance. Definitely we are going to help you out in your gate preparation. Okay, all the faculties that you can see on the screen and all the experienced faculty. Okay, okay, well qualified, right? And also the main thing is that you will be having a pattern. of a study the main thing is that beta how so there will be a pattern of study so every day you will have a schedule okay so every day uh, at some time there will be live classes you can watch those recording any time you can watch those recording any time after the completion of the classes you will be getting your practice question just right after the class okay class is completed you get the access to the practice question 15 20 practice question will be there now as we are now seeing the grisha of law now after then when you are doing it on the youtube so whatever question i am uh, giving you in the session itself you can have that but in there we can have the practice question as well okay okay there are doubt and discussion sessions as well which is not written in this slide but there are doubt and discussion session learning session getting my point beta getting my point so there are doubt and discussion session also so you can have your doubt asked in that on the website when you join so you have this facility also you have this facility also that you can uh, you can uh, uh, ask your doubts in the portal and will be very happily answering that along with that you will be having the test series also you will be having the test series also okay you will be having the test series also okay uh, quizzes also so if you come on the platform that will be great and definitely will be helping you out in that right but definitely will be helping you in that okay a lot okay now coming back to this now coming back to this so you can you can you will you can give it uh you can give it a try if you want okay okay so now s plus l is less than equal to p plus q now please understand the grishoff law okay please understand the grishoff law so what grishoff has said so only if we satisfy only if we satisfy grishoff law only if we satisfy the grishoff law only if we satisfy the grishoff law we can get we can get complete rotation we can get complete rotation in the four bar chain mechanism now please try to understand this also now we can get now please understand this word we can get matlab hame mil sakta hai zaruri nahi hai ki mile hi please understand this we can get the rotation but it is no compulsion that you if you do not want to get the rotation even then you are compelled compelled to get the rotation there is nothing like that so grishoff law is giving you the choice so we can get means means the choice is ours means the choice is ours okay we can get the rotation so the choice is ours okay so what choices we have 
So Kreshoff law giving us the choices. See, we are engineers and we have to decide. So what choices do we have? So we can have one crank. Okay. We can have two cranks. And when we talk about cranks, beta, we are only, so I keep telling you this, we are only interested in input and output. We have no interest in coupler whatsoever. Right. We are not at all interested in the coupler. From the very first day, I am asking you to this. I am asking you this. I am asking you this. That the theory of machine, the whole game, in theory of machine, whole game is about whole game is about input and output. Okay, input and output. Now, when I say what choices we have, so we have the choice of getting one crank. We have the choice of getting two crank. And even if we want, we have the choice of getting no crank. Now, when I say one crank, when I say one crank, so let's say this is A, this is B, this is C. So as in the question also, we get option. Grishoff law is giving us options. Okay. But you will get these options only when, only when, only when you get these options only when Grishoff law is satisfied. Now, if Grishoff law is not satisfied, so if S plus L is greater than P plus Q, if S plus L is greater than P plus Q, that is Grishoff law is not satisfied. Grishoff's law is not satisfied. So what choice we are left with? So we have no choice now. No choice. We won't be getting any crank. No crank will be obtained. No choice we have. No crank will be obtained. Now, now, since in the four bar chain mechanism, since in the four bar chain mechanism, we are not getting any crank. So other than crank, what we can have? So crank is something which is making complete rotation, which is making complete rotation, which is making complete rotation. So if at input and output, I am only talking about input and output. So at input and output, if they are not crank, so they will be rocker. Agar ye crank nahi honge, to inko bida hum keh sakte hai, rocker or lever, whatever we want, we can call them. So we can call them rocker or lever, we can call them rocker or lever. So this rocker or lever something is which oscillates, which doesn't make full com uh, complete rotation. So which oscillate means incomplete rotation. Incomplete rotation means it doesn't move 360 degree. It doesn't uh, move 360 degree. So what we can do? So which oscillate means which make incomplete rotation. So I hope it is fine to all of you. Which oscillate that means incomplete rotation. So rocker or lever is something which is oscillating and which is making incomplete rotation. So if at input and output we do not get the crank in four bar chain mechanism, we are certain to have the rocker or the lever which make incomplete rotation because since there is a pin joint, we, we will not be able to get anything else. We have no other choice. Is it okay or not? Is it okay or not? So when I say no choice, no crank will be obtained, so we'll be obtaining only one thing we can obtain if we have Grishoff law insatisfied. So we will be having rocker rocker mechanism. And when I say rocker rocker mechanism, so I mean by it that input and output both, input and output both are making incomplete rotation that is oscillation. That is oscillation. So when I say we have one crank, the choices we got we get one crank. So this also means that when we get one crank, we will get the other one as rocker. Okay, when we get the two cranks, when we grab the two cranks, so we will be getting crank and crank, that is double crank mechanism. And when we have the zero crank, so that means we will be getting 
no crime. That means even then uh, we will be getting some input and output. So that is rocker rocker mechanism. Now please understand the concept behind it. So Grishoff law is satisfied. You have the choice. If Grishoff law is satisfied, you have the choice that you can get double crank mechanism. You can get crank rocker mechanism. Or you can get double rocker mechanism. But if Grishoff law is not satisfied, you do not have any choice, and you will be only getting, and you only be getting, you will only be getting what you will only be getting what you will only be getting, you will only be getting what you will only be getting, you will only be getting the double rocker mechanism. Now, is it fine to everyone? Yes or no? Is it fine to everyone say yes or no? Can you please tell me that, Bida? Can you please tell me that? Can you please tell me that? Bataye, please bataye. Can you please tell me that? Is it fine up to this point? Is it fine up to this point? Is it fine up to this point? So these, what we are getting here, this is also known as inversion of mechanism. Inversion. This is something we know as inversion. So what is this inversion? What is this inversion? So inversion is something by fixing one link at a time. Inversion means what? What do you mean by this inversion? What do you mean by this inversion? So inversion is something, inversion is something, so what do you mean by this inversion? So inversion is something by fixing one link at a time, by fixing one link at a time, we get, we get different input and output. Right, we get different input and output from a chain. Okay, kisi chain may different different link ko at a time fix karke. We are getting different input and outputs motion. That is what we know as known as inversion. Now let's start to understand this Grishoff law. Okay, okay. So now the question that must be coming in your mind. Okay, that's a when we'll be getting double crank, when we'll be getting the crank rocker, when we'll be getting the double rocker. Getting my point? So now let's get the answer to it. Now let's write it like this. So this is case one. So now if S plus L is less than equal to P plus Q, we can say Grishoff law is satisfied. Grishoff law is satisfied now Grishoff law is satisfied so now please understand this we will be focusing on in Grishoff law so how to make this decision how to make the decision that by uh, fixing what will be getting what inversion so we will focus upon focus upon we will do what we will focus upon shortest link Okay, our focus will be at the position of shortest link. No matter what other links, wherever be the other links, they can be at any place. But we are just focused upon the position of the shortest link. Getting my point? So what I must say here, that the we won't be seeing anything else. We won't be seeing, my dear, anything else other than the shortest link. So we just be checking, we will just be checking the Grishoff law. Hum sirf Grishoff law check karengi, we will be checking the Grishoff law. We will be checking the Grishoff law. We will be checking the Grishoff law and after that, we will be only concerning, we will be concerned only about, we will be concerned only about, we will be concerned only about, we will be concerned only about the position of the shortest link, right? The position of the shortest link. Now, so what can be the position of shortest link? What can be the position of the shortest link? So shortest link can be at the fixed position. Now, 
if shortest link is at the fixed position, I do not want to know what link, what other links are at what position. What other links are at what position. So if shortest link is fixed, my dear. If shortest link is fixed, my dear. So if shortest link is fixed, if shortest link is fixed, so both input and output will make complete rotation no matter, no matter, no matter what are the length of those links. So this will be making a rotation, this will be making a rotation. So we will be having double crank mechanism. So try to listen to me very carefully. Try to listen to me very carefully. So if we have, if we have my dear, if we have my dear, if we have, if we have shortest link in the fixed position provided that the gracious dot, do not forget to check with the gracious of law. Sometimes what happens, we are so much excited that we forget to see the position of the shortest link. Okay, just don't do that my dear. We don't have to do that my dear. We don't have to do that. We don't, we are not supposed to do that my dear. We shouldn't be doing that with us. We shouldn't be doing that. We always must check the Grishoff law first. Now, if Grishoff law satisfied and the shortest link is fixed, what can be the eighth number of choice? So, shortest link is fixed. So, if Grishoff law is satisfied and shortest link is fixed, we are going to definitely getting, we will be definitely getting double crank mechanism means at input and output, at input and output, at input and output, at both of them, at both of them, we will be at both input and output, we will be at both input and output, we will be getting at both input and output, we will be getting complete rotation, we will be getting two cranks, right? Right now, if shortest link is not at the fixed position, where it could be? Now, if shortest link is not at the fixed position, where it could be? So, it could be adjacent to fixed position. It could be adjacent to fixed position. Getting my point, Peter? it can be adjacent to fixed position. What shortest link? We need to focus upon this only. Nothing else. Shortest link adjacent to the fixed position. Now this is your fixed position. Now when I say so, I can do it like this. So if we can say the shortest link is adjacent to the fixed position. So this could be at this position. So when I say adjacent, when I say adjacent, my dear, so adjacent is this also and adjacent is this also. Now, if short is so provided the Grishoff law is satisfied, remember what my saying. So Grishoff law is satisfied, shortest link, if Grishoff law is satisfied, shortest link is adjacent to the fixed position. If Grishoff law is satisfied, if Grishoff law is satisfied and shortest link is adjacent to the fixed position, please understand this. Please understand my saying. Please understand my saying. So, if shortest link, is adjacent to fixed position, is adjacent to fixed position or so please I will keep telling you again and again that because this all happens only when Grishoff law is satisfied. If Grishoff law is not satisfied, if Grishoff law is not satisfied, it is not going to happen this way. If Grishoff law my dear is not satisfied, it is not going to happen this way. Okay, these all things will only happen if Grishoff law is satisfied. So, if shortest link is adjacent to fixed position or, or we can say in a position of output or input 
in the position of output and input so the shortest link will rotate shortest link will rotate completely shortest link will rotate completely so we can say if shortest link is at the position of input and output if shortest link is a position of input and output or or both if it is a position of input or output or in the position of both or in the position of both the shortest link will become the crank the shortest link will make itself will make itself a crank now what i want to tell you will make itself a crank now what i am trying to tell you my dear here what i am trying to tell you my dear here so if shortest link is in the position adjacent to the fixed link if shortest link is in the position adjacent to the fixed link it will make itself come so these links are not shorter definitely so let's write them so let's say p is fixed q is here l is here or maybe l is fixed q is here p is here so independent of the independent of so what i said our focus will be on shortest link only so no matter what link is placed at what position that doesn't concern us that doesn't concern us we need to see the position of shortest link only okay so if shortest link is the position of is in the position of input and output it will make itself rotate so it will make complete rotation this will make complete rotation this will also be making complete rotation so here in this case we will be getting crank and rocker mechanism now please understand this i never said this that whenever shortest link is in the adjacent position we always get crank rocker mechanism please mark my word if the short what we have written here please understand that if the shortest link is adjacent to the fixed position or is in the position of or is in the position of input and output or is in the position of input and output or is in the position of input and output what will be getting what we will be getting we will be getting we will be getting what we will be getting we will be getting we will be getting itself it will make itself a crack so if on the opposite side the link is not shortest it will become a rocker so if shortest link is adjacent to fixed position it will make itself rotate or you can say it will make itself a crack it will make itself a crack now what can be the third condition so if the shortest link is not fixed if the shortest link if the shortest link is not fixed if it is not adjacent so definitely it is opposite to the uh, position of the opposite to the position of the fixed link so here in this it will become a rocker this will also become a rocker so even if understand this even if even if even if the grishoff law is satisfied as i said there is no compulsion double rocker mechanism so even if the grishoff law is satisfied there is no compulsion that you have to have the crank so if grishoff law is satisfied and you do not want crank in your mechanism even that is possible if you place the shortest link opposite to the fixed position now now is this grishoff law clear to everyone so we will be seeing the question of it in the next session hum iske questions ki baat beta we will be doing the questions of it in the in the next session getting my point beta getting my point beta getting my point beta getting my point beta getting my point 
getting my point or not understood understood so today in this session we have we have discussed the ratio of law we have discussed the differences of kinematic chain and simple mechanism and when in grishoff law to do what to be done what to be done to get a uh, different kind of involvement okay so we will be doing on this the questions on this in the next session so in this session i explain to you the grishoff law so please come in the next session also and for the next videos please subscribe the channel please subscribe the channel the textbook gate channel on youtube and please refer it to your friends because all what we are doing or what uh, initiative this uh, the textbook gate channel has taken the textbook.com has uh, taken so this is completely free of cost so you can come on youtube you can watch the videos you can uh, get some knowledge and you can use it in your gate examination okay so with this thank you very much and in the next session we have will be continuing from here in our series of uh, this theory of machine okay so thank you very much beta definitely please come in the next session also and refer to your friends so thank you we'll see you in the next session